Yo, what's up guys? Sam here. Let's go ahead and just uh, drop an F in the comments down below because we didn't get any new physical Apple products today, which was sad, you know, because I, I, I wanted a new MacBook Pro. I don't know about you, I certainly something I was looking forward to just throwing cash at Tim Cook's forehead for. WWDC 21 today wrapped up and we got a look at all of Apple's new software, none of their new hardware, uh, and it felt very earthy. It felt like they went back to their roots for WWDC, really focusing on the features, on the software. We got iOS 15, watchOS 8, tvOS 15, and of course, macOS Monterey, and it's all stunning. In my next videos, we'll be going hands-on extensively with iOS 15, iPadOS 15, the new Mac OS, and everything else Apple announced. So drop a like if you're excited, and of course hit subscribe so you're always staying up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's kick things off today with Watch OS 8. First up, there's a new Portraits watch face that ties into the updated Photos app. Apple has completely redesigned photos on Watch OS 8 to include a new mosaic view and also um, the ability, I mean, to send GIFs and messages. So there's a lot of like photo centric features happening on the watch, which, it, you know, I don't really look at photos on my watch, but if you do, it, it's here and it seems like it'll be really helpful, especially for sending things and messages. Like the messages upgrades here are really impressive. You can now have the same view for dictation, scribble and any other input before there was like buttons you always had to input first now it's unified and like sending text which is something i do a lot on my watch should be a lot better next up inside of the workout app you try to scroll out there you could get tai chi and pilates as a like pre-made pre-optimized workout now so you'll be able to track that a bit easier plus there's like a brand new set from a specific trainer i can't remember her name but they made a big deal about it at the keynote inside of uh, fitness plus if you subscribe to that and fitness plus workouts you know the videos that Apple makes as part of their extra subscription service. You can now do picture in picture on all your devices, which is pretty nice. As rumored, there are new contacts and tips apps and a brand new mindfulness app, which combines like mindful meditation and the Breathe app together. So it still looks very similar, but they've even revamped the Breathe animation to look even smoother and more satisfying. So, you know, I don't know if your watch does this like during just all day long because I have anxiety. My watch is just like, hey, you should breathe. You should chill out. And I'm just like, oh, try it. Maybe the, new, maybe the new watch app will help me. The Find My app has also been updated to allow you to find stuff a bit easier on here. So nothing like ginormous for watch OS 8. I mean, there's respiratory rate. You can monitor that while you're using sleep tracking overall pretty tiny update nothing too wild here uh it was definitely mac os monterey monterey matterday matterday i don't know listen i'm just the guy talking here okay you don't need to listen to me <laughs> first of all the wallpaper is so good for mac os monterey it looks incredible it's purple it's like a similar style to the mac os big sur like bright colors. Oh man, I love it. They nailed it. The Shortcuts app is coming to Mac. It was on the iPhone and iPad for a couple of years, but it is officially on the Mac and it's replacing the Automator app, which was like, I believe a more brutalistic developer focused version of Shortcuts, but Shortcuts will now sync with all your devices. There's a pre-made gallery on Mac, similar to what you'll see on iOS 15 and also the watch. The Photos app has been improved. Uh, there's the same messages improvements that came in iOS 15. We'll jump into those in just a second, but I don't want to focus just on the features that are coming over to the Mac because Apple has done some insane stuff just strictly on the Mac. The first one is called Universal Control. And in the demo, they showed like you could take your cursor from here to here. I'm talking about from your Mac desktop to your iPad desktop to another MacBook that you have in the same room. I don't know how they've achieved this. It seems miraculous, but this universal control is coming and they showed you dragging and dropping an image from photos on your iPad into the final cut timeline on your Mac. And I did have to change my shorts after that one. This is so, so good. And I'm just beyond excited to see this. Um, next to that, AirPlay on Mac, a feature that I wanted since I was a kid, being able to AirPlay from your phone to this, there's actually an, I don't know if you guys can see it, there's a huge iMac sitting right here. Being able to AirPlay to Mac from your iOS devices is so helpful, not only for music, but for playing videos for people on a larger screen or for yourself. Uh, airplane fitness plus workouts you can do all of that now which is just like one of these things we've wanted to see forever and safari has been completely redesigned it looks so good like 
absolutely amazing. There's new protections. That design also is on iPadOS, which we'll jump into iOS 15. The new Safari has an all new user interface, tab groups now, redesigned tabs, and also web extensions that go to your iPad and your iPhone as well. So Safari and Mac OS Monterey is great. This is along with iCloud Plus, which is like a, a mildly upgraded version of iCloud with like a built-in VPN essentially, uh, all new maps. It, it's beautiful. Like Mac OS Monterey, honestly, I didn't think it would be, but I, I think it's actually my favorite update of all of them. Because honestly, going to iPad OS 15, I am super let down. And it's something that I predicted. It's something that I've seen based on Apple's previous behavior that they, um, well, they don't see the iPad like the rest of us. You see, Apple keeps calling the iPad a computer replacement, so everybody is starting to be like, oh man, like maybe the iPad is a computer replacement. And then every year, Apple just gives us 10 hundred reasons to, to not make the computer a computer replacement. I mean, this year we've gotten some nice things, a, a revamped home screen with upgraded widgets that can be placed anywhere, widgets that are larger, bigger, more full screen, and optimized for the iPad, and, and even the app library. There are some new multitasking features which are impressive. Multitasking view at the top of every screen, the app library always located on the dock, the ability in multitasking, or like the, the app switcher I should say, to drag and drop apps and go into split view. These are all nice improvements. I mean, the biggest announcement was probably the fact that you can build apps on the iPad that run on the iPad and iPhone. Like there's a mini version of Xcode. Listen, there's an M1 chip inside of this iPad right here. And this update doesn't feel like it really does anything to take advantage of the M1 chip that last year's iPad couldn't have done. There's no Final Cut. There's no logic. There are no pro apps on here. It's not the update that we were waiting for. And you know, I, I hope more comes throughout the beta cycle, but iPad OS 15 is, is honestly a lot down for me, a, a pretty big one at that. That being said, iOS 15 feels really focused and like a solid update overall. Listen, I don't think it's as big as iOS 14 by any means. Apple also didn't call it the biggest update. And there's a lot of improvements in each app across the board. Like what Apple did touch this time around, which was messages, health, FaceTime got some huge upgrades. Like let's, let's just focus on those to start. So in health, there's a new way to share your data with family members view trends over time of your health, which is actually really brilliant, inside of messages. But there were significant UI updates. You can pin individual messages. There are new photo collages and stacks when they're sent and the ability to download right away, which is so sick because like when somebody sends you a photo, I mean, I, I generally download a lot of photos and you can also get shared for you integration. So when somebody sends you something in messages, it might show up in Safari as a link or the photos as a suggested collection. I think it's really smart and uh, it, it's a good upgrade. It's a solid upgrade. And in FaceTime, this is so incredible. There's share play now. So you can actually watch a movie with somebody on FaceTime. Like, you know, when I was in my long distance relationship, this might've actually saved the relationship. You're a little late on this one, Apple. You can stream music together and watch. It's amazing. Uh, FaceTime also features wide spectrum audio and voice isolation, wide spectrum to capture like everything in the room noise isolation if you just want it to focus on your voice, which, you know, boosts your voice and cuts all the other frequencies, and even spatial audio, plus portrait mode. There's portrait mode and you can schedule calls in FaceTime. It really is like Zoom. And again, like now that the pandemic is basically over, it, you know, it's a little late. Oh, wait there, Apple, but hey, I'm not complaining. Well, I am complaining, but I'm not. Moving back to notifications, though, they have a new look. You can set a status that will deliver messages uh, and notifications and alerts differently, depending on if you're sleeping. If you're at the gym, these will be suggested. They'll be updated on the fly. They use on-device machine learning to best suggest maybe uh, working or sleeping or vibing or, or whatever status you want to set. It's going to help you see notifications. Plus, there's a really nice new wake-up notification summary. So it'll give you a broader look at your notifications rather than having to see each one individually, which like could be hundreds a day. It could be pretty tiring. Inside of the Photos app, along with upgrades everywhere else, you're getting searchable text, which is incredible, and intelligent memory mixes that will sync up with Apple Music Music. You can do custom music, and you can change it on the fly. So the, the vibe will be updated dynamically, depending if you do a country slower song, boo, we hate country, and I update smash the like button for me, but dislike for country. And also if you want to do like a little trap, you're getting turned up out there. All right. You could change it on the fly 
and it was a miraculous demo to show how the photos just magically fall into place. Somebody felt maps up everywhere in all the right places because there's some great updates with a new improved 3D view with an insane amount of detail, this beautiful new nighttime mode, and even in transit, you can set favorite lines so you can take them more frequently. It'll tell you where to get off. When you get off at your stop, it'll show you which way to go on the street to continue your destination using augmented reality in certain cities like Los Angeles. It was pretty, it was actually pretty sick. Plus there's a, a globe view. So goodbye, Google Earth. We will all be deleting that apps on our phone. Wallet supports your driver's license and ID cards in certain states, along with ultra wide band support expanding for certain vehicles and home locks for HomeKit. So you can just tap your phone as a hotel key at your own home with a lock. They have a ton of new partners. <laughs> I'm speaking so fast and telling you so much because there is so much to just broadly tell you about, but also rounding things out in whether there's a new design with a lot of additional information and radar. Radar is in weather. Radars and weather. Listen, this is all for the broad overview. There is a lot more coming today. I have a lot more videos. I'm gonna rush this video out as my devices are, are updating to the beta. So more coming soon. Thanks for watching. Keep it locked and loaded here on iUpdate for the best coverage on iOS 15 and more. And I'll see you guys in a second.